how has avoidance impacted you over the years? Um, yeah, I, you know, avoided a lot of how I was, you know, I try to avoid a lot of my thought processes uh, throughout the years, you know, through, you know, substance abuse. Um, I drank a lot of alcohol, uh, you know, smoked a lot of weed. And, um, you know, I just felt like that was one way of trying to avoid in terms of how to work and deal with, uh, you know, my thought process, how I was feeling, you know, the, you know, my uh, senses of depression and anxiety and all that, instead of just like really trying to work with it, I, you know, used other means to do so and tried to suppress it. Uh, but do you remember actively, um, trying to suppress what you were feeling or was it less more subconscious than that? It, I, I mean, it was a few years back, so I definitely felt like it was a lot of thought suppression at first, like about, um, you know, it was a lot of thought suppression in terms of how my, you know, how the family would view me. Uh, you know, I come from a pretty conservative household, so it's a, it, it, you know, I just felt like I was, I didn't reach their expectations, I didn't reach their level. And, you know, and given coupled with like the let this lack of achievement that I was feeling just like all throughout life, um, you know, that really put me into a downer and tr to avoid those feelings, you know, substance abuse uh, definitely played its role. Um, so, yeah, I mean, so that had happened and uh, yeah, I just felt like I couldn't do anything. I didn't know what I identified with. I just felt like I was lost, like hit rock bottom for a little bit in my mid twenties. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then how did you, what did you start going towards? How did you start relating to avoidance that helped you get out of that kind of rock bottom situation? Um, what really helped me got out of this rock bottom situation was, I mean, I'm doing it right now with you, <laughs> uh, was, uh, you know, I was, you know, I dro just dropped out of law school and I, had nothing, you know, I just didn't know what to do. I was at a point where, you know, I just felt like I didn't care about anything. Depression was running pretty high. Uh, you know, just everything just seemed like a chore. Um, just anything, uh, you know, just walking out, going to the bathroom or taking a shower, just any daily basic needs that people do on a daily basis. <laughs> it's, it was just, everything just seemed like a chore. So, um, it really changed once I was, you know, pretty much pushed to doing therapy. And uh, it really gave me a, you know, I really just, I really came into it with no expectations. It was not really, it was not exactly my first uh, therapy session I had, but I already did have a stigma, you know, towards it. And, and uh, I, I had my own perspective on it. Didn't really think much of it, you know, uh, especially from my background, I did a it wasn't really something that I thought was completely necessary, but, um, you know, having gone through this in short, you know, having gone through this therapy process has really had, uh, just had a huge impact on the way that I view things now and the way how I view my, uh, you know, my own, uh, you know, content areas and my own, um, you know, my own identity. I mean, I just feel like it had hugely impacted me to the point where now I'm in grad school to be, uh, to hopefully become a licensed clinical uh, therapist. Yeah. It's such a, it's such an, um, amazing shift from kind of stigmatizing, um, and feeling like therapy wasn't worth it or it wasn't helpful or something like that to wanting to do that as your career. So that's really great. 